statistical functions with Excel. Section 1.1 Excel has several individual functions for quickly summarizing the features of a dataset and array in Excel terminology. These include average, which returns the mean, SDEV for the standard deviation, max, and minimum, which we assume are familiar to the reader. To obtain the distribution of moderate size data set, there are some useful functions that deserve to be better known. For example, the quartile function produces the individual quartile values on the basis of the percentiles of the data set and the frequency function returns the whole frequency distribution of the data set after grouping. Excel also provides functions for a range of different theoretical probability distributions, in particular those for the normal distribution, norm s distance and norm s inverse for the standard normal with zero mean and standard deviation 1, norm distance and norm inverse for any normal distribution. Other useful functions in the statistical category are those for two variables, which provide many individual quantities used in regression and correlation analysis. For example, intercept, slope, correlation, covariance. There is also a little-known array function, Linus, which returns the essential regression statistics in array form. Most of these functions are examined in more detail on regression. Their performance is compared and contrasted with the regression output from the data analysis regression procedure. In the next section, we explain how to use the frequency, quartile and various normal functions via examples in the frequency and norm sheets of the STAT workbook. Section 1.2 Using the frequency function Frequency data array bins array counts how often values in a data set occur within specified intervals or bins and then returns these frequencies in a vertical array. The bin array is the set of intervals into which the values are grouped. Since the function returns output in the form of an array, it is necessary to mark out a range of cells in the spreadsheet to receive the output before entering the function. We explain how to use frequency with an example set out in the frequency sheet of the STAT workbook. As shown in the figure, monthly returns and log returns using the LN function in columns D10 to D71 and E10 to E70 have been summarized in rows 4 to 7. Suppose the aim is to get the frequency distribution of the log returns E10 to E71 that is the so-called data array. The objective might be to check that these returns are approximately normally distributed. First, we have to decide on intervals or bins for grouping the data. Inspection of the maximum and minimum log return suggests about 10 to 12 intervals in a range negative 16% to 20%. The interval values, which have been entered in range G5 to G14, act as upper limits when the log returns are grouped into the so-called bins. To enter the frequency function correctly, select the range H5 to H15. Then start by typing D and clicking on the paste function button labeled FX to complete the function syntax. After adding the last bracket, with the cursor on its cells edit line, enter the function by holding down the control then the shift then the enter keys. You need to use three fingers, otherwise it will not work. If this fails, keep the output range of cells selected, press the edit key F2 edit the formula if necessary, then press control, shift, enter, once again. You should now see the function enclosed in curly brackets FG in the cells and the frequencies array in cells G4 to G14. The results are shown in the spreadsheet. Use the sum function in cell G17 to check that the frequencies sum to 53. Interpreting the results, we can see that there were no log returns below negative 16%, 6 values in the range negative 16% to 12% and no values above 20%. The bottom cell in the frequency array, G15, contains any values above the bin zipper limit, 0 0.20. Since the frequency function has array output, individual cells cannot be changed. If a different number of intervals is required, the current array must be deleted and the function entered again. It helps to convert the frequencies into percentage frequencies relative to the size of the dataset of 53 values and then to calculate cumulated percentage frequencies as shown in columns I and J in the sheet. The percentage frequency and cumulative percentage frequency formulas can be examined in the frequency sheet. The best way to display the percentage cumulative frequencies is an XY chart with data points connected by a smooth line with no markers. To produce a chart like that in spreadsheet, select ranges G5 to G14 and J5 to J14 as the source data. Note that, to select non-contiguous ranges, 
select the first range, then hold down the control key whilst selecting the second and subsequent ranges. For normally distributed log returns, the cumulative distribution should be sigmoid in shape as indicated by the red line. The actual log returns data shows some departure from normality, possibly due to skewness. Quartile returns the quartile of a data set. The second input quartile is an integer that determines which quartile is returned, if 0, the minimum value of the array, if 1, the first quartile i, dot e, the 25th percentile of the array, if 2, the median value 50th percentile if 3, the third quartile 75th percentile if 4, the maximum value. The quartiles provide a quick and relatively easy way to get the cumulative distribution of a data set. For example in cell H22 in the worksheet, the entry of the statistical functions related to normal distribution, their names all start with the four letters norm, and some include an S to indicate that the standard normal distribution is assumed. Norms distance Z returns the cumulative distribution function for the standard normal distribution. Norm SINV probability returns values of Z for specified probabilities. The rather more versatile norm distance applies to any normal distribution. If the cumulative input parameter equals 1 or true, it returns values for the cumulative distribution function. If cumulative input equals 0 or false, it returns the probability density function. We turn to the worksheet norm to in the norm sheet with entries for the probability density and for the left-hand tail probability in cells C5 and D5 respectively. Both these formulas use the general norm distance function with mean and standard deviation inputs set to 0 and 1 respectively. In C5, the last input cumulative takes value 0 for the probability density and in D5 takes value 1 for the left-hand tail probability. The ordinate values corresponding to left-hand tail probabilities can be obtained from the norm inverse function as shown in cell F5. To familiarize yourself with these functions, copy the formula down and examine the results.